Hello everybody, welcome to the video on the orbital motion of planets and artificial satellites. We'll start with satellites. Satellites can undergo uniform circular motion around the Earth, whereby they undergo a circular path as shown with constant speed and radius. And as we discussed in the uniform circular motion module, any object that undergoes circular motion will be exerted by a force that is known as the centripetal force which is directed towards the center of the circular motion. In this scenario of an orbital motion around the Earth, it is a gravitational force provided by the planet Earth on the satellite that's causing or providing the centripetal force. The gravitational force of attraction is acting on the satellite towards the center of Earth, and this is also our centripetal force. While the satellite is undergoing uniform circular motion, it's important to remember that its linear velocity remains perpendicular to the gravitational force. That is, this angle here always remains 90 degrees. Since the gravitational force is the only force that's providing or contributing towards the centripetal force, we can derive an expression for the velocity of the satellite by equating the expressions of the two forces. So here we have the centripetal force equals to mv squared over r, where the smaller m represents the mass of the satellite that's orbiting Earth. The gravitational force equals to gmm over r squared. The capital M is mass of the Earth, and again, the smaller m is mass of the satellites. By making this equation, we can cancel out smaller m both sides, and we can cancel out the distance in the denominator. This gives us a simpler expression where v squared, that is the linear velocity of the satellite in circular motion, equals to gm, where the capital M is mass of the Earth, divided by r. By squaring both sides, I can obtain expression for the orbital velocity of the satellite, which equals to the square root of gm over r. You can see here that the orbital velocity is directly proportional to the mass of the Earth, and inversely proportional to the distance between the satellite and the center of the Earth. The biggest takeaway from this expression for the orbital velocity is that the orbital velocity is independent of the object's mass. This means no matter how heavy or how light the satellite is, whether it's 500 kilograms or 50,000 kilograms, the orbital velocity required to complete a circular orbital path with the same radius will be exactly the same. The orbital velocity is therefore the velocity required for any mass to maintain a stable circular orbit at a given radius. It is perpendicular to the gravitational force because it is a linear velocity. And you can see this illustrated in both diagrams. When the linear velocity points upwards, again, the centripetal force will be perpendicular or the gravitational force will be perpendicular and points towards the center of the Earth. And the same happens in the second scenario here. When the velocity of the satellite increases and becomes faster than the required orbital velocity, what will happen is that the path of the circular motion will increase. The satellite will then take on a larger circular, circular path, and therefore we say that the orbital radius will increase. If the satellite slows down and loses its speed so that it's less than the orbital velocity, then it will take on a smaller circular motion, so the orbital radius will decrease. So what you need to understand here is that for every circular motion of a different radius, the required orbital velocity will be different. Let's calculate the orbital velocity of a satellite in an orbit of 500 kilometers above Earth's surface. Use the following information in your calculations. So we know that the orbital velocity, as proven before, is equal to the square root of gm over r. So this equals to the gravitational universal constant, multiply the mass of the Earth, and divided by the distance between the satellite and the Earth. So this is where drawing a diagram to visualize a scenario can help a lot. So this is Earth, and I have a satellite somewhere in the atmosphere. And we are told that the radius of the Earth is 6.371 million meters, while the altitude here is 500 kilometers. 
Again, of course, this is not to scale. The distance in the formula for orbital velocity is the distance between the satellite and the center of Earth. So this is my orbital radius here. So my r is the sum of these two numbers. So 6.371 times 10 to the power of 6 meters plus 500 kilometers. But we need to use this in meters, so we can say 500,000 meters. And of course, this is all square root. And this gives me quite a large velocity, 6,974 meters per second. So this means the satellite needs to maintain a velocity of 6,974 meters per second in order to maintain in this orbit. Okay, let's look at another question concerning the orbital motion of planets around the Sun. Assume Earth orbits the Sun in a circular path with a radius of 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11 meters. Calculate the orbital velocity of the Earth around the Sun. Use the following information in your calculations. So we're given the mass of the Sun and mass of the Earth. Now again, drawing a picture here can help us visualize the scenario. So we have the Sun and we've got Earth over here and it's orbiting around the Sun in what we assume is a circular path. So again, we can see that the gravitational force exerted by the Sun on the Earth, Fg, this is what's providing the centripetal force required for the circular motion. So again, we can say that the gravitational force is equal to the centripetal force. So here, ms is mass of the sun, me is mass of the earth. The centripetal force depends on the mass of the object that undergoes a circular motion, which is the mass of the earth here, me. We can cancel out the mass of the earth on both sides, and the distance r in the denominator. And this gives me v squared, which is the orbital velocity of the Earth, equals to g ms over r. So that means v is equal to the square root of g ms over r. So again, I've derived the equation for the orbital velocity. And the equation here tells me that the orbital velocity depends on the mass of the Sun, not the Earth divided by the distance between them. So that's this, this distance over here, r. And we are given this distance as a radius in the question. Using the orbital velocity formula, I can then calculate the orbital velocity. So here, again, very important to keep in mind, understand that I am only using the mass of the sun, not the mass of the earth, because the orbital velocity is independent of the mass of the object that's undergoing the orbit. And divided by the radius or the distance between them, this is already meters, and square root. And this gives me roughly 29,821.7 meters per second. This concludes the video on orbital velocity of satellites and planets.